Welcome back to this course on using git for version control. Before we can have git track the changes in our project, we have to set it up first. Now this is to be done only once. This needs to be done only once for every new computer on which you are going to use git. Um, so whenever you are using git on a new computer for the first time, you need to configure a few things. Okay. And uh, the, this rest of the video will be based on lesson two of the software carpentry materials, which uh, is available at this link. So if you click on this link and open it in, in a new tab, you can follow it along uh, as I type. So I'm going to show a live demo of what kind of configurations that we need to do to set up Git for our project. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to set up a username and an email address. So all the commands that uh, git uses begin with git, the keyword git, followed by what you want to do. This is a general pattern, okay? And then there may be some options that you have to pass to the command, but this is a general pattern. Git followed by what you want to do, followed by some options and exactly what you're doing okay so in this case i want to configure git for the very first usage in my computer in this computer okay so git config is the word uh, is how you do it so git config and now we are going to do this configuration globally that is for every project that we are going to use on this computer this configuration is going to carry through i may be having a c plus plus project I may be having a LaTeX project where I write a paper, but all these projects will have this specific configuration. You can also do local configuration or project specific configuration, but we are not going to cover that. This global configuration is the minimum that you need. So, and to achieve that, you have to use the keyword dash dash global. So, git config dash dash global. And the first thing we want to configure is our username. Now, I suggest you put in your real username within double quotes. And that is because you may be collaborating on this project with other researchers and they will have to uniquely identify you by your username or by your name. You could use any other name uh, or a nickname, but I strongly suggest that you use your real username to be professional and courteous and have uh, others identify you easily. So that is the first configuration I'm going to do. I'm going to use uh, the next configuration is my email address. So the pattern remains the same git config dash dash global followed by user dot email. Okay, that's your user email address. Now I suggest that you put in your real email address so that a collaborator in your project can contact you easily. This must be your real email address. Um, it is, uh, you can also put in some dummy address, uh, email address here, but I strongly suggest you put your real email address. Um, this is also because when you later on in this uh, set of videos, we're going to be talking about remote repositories or um, things like GitHub, which is like a separate mechanism or a central repository to store all the versions and where your collaborators may collaborate. So GitHub also identify you, uh, identifies you by an email address so it is helpful if these two emails match uh, for various uh, reasons so which we will cover uh, so I suggest you put in your real email address so but because this video is being recorded uh, I do not want to sh share my email address here I'm going to put in some dummy email address but if you're following along I suggest that you put in your real email address okay that's the next thing we configure okay Okay, uh, other than that, so these are the absolute basics that you need to do. Uh, the next, the very next thing we want to do is to configure how line endings work on your computer and how Git recognizes line endings. What do I mean by this? Okay, so let's say you're working on a code or a, or a, a software code and you want to go into the next line and you hit the enter key or the return key on your computer. What happens then is the operating system decides to use a specific character for denoting the carriage return key press. Okay, so on a Windows machine, the carriage return is denoted by carriage return and line feed or the enter key 
action is denoted by carriage return followed by line feed and for linux and mac they have their own these two operating systems have their own uh, way of denoting the carriage return or the enter key operation it may be carriage return followed by line feed or just a carriage return or just a line feed and uh, but because your project, for example, if you're working on a project where one of the users is a Linux user and one of the users is a Mac user, or you yourself may have a work machine which uses Windows, uh, a machine at home which uses Linux, for example, and you may want to have the work uh, seamlessly transferred between your uh, Linux machine and uh, your Windows machine for things like that for for such use cases We had to configure how git handles line endings and these days git is pretty smart about handling line endings So there is a configuration where you can set it to auto detect the line endings So on your local machine it will use this local line endings that your operating system recognizes and when it um, commits when you actually have the changes committed to the git's uh, version control system it will intelligently map those line endings suitably so when you have when you're working on this project later on on a different machine it will suitably convert the line endings automatically for you and that is pretty smart and how to do that is to is through this configuration git.code uh, git config global core dot auto crlf crlf stands for carriage return line feed and auto crlf stands for automatic handling of carriage return and line feed now on a mac uh, machine and or and linux machine you would use the word input here on if you are on a windows machine like i am you will use the word true okay so that's set up the next thing to set up is your text editor this is important when you start describing what changes you have made to a particular project let's say you're working on a small set of changes and you you have to open up a text editor to describe the changes in a detailed something called as a commit message it describes what changes you have done and that's done in a plain text editor now everybody have has their favorite text editor right my favorite text editor is something called vim v i m now this is a very powerful text editor but for beginners it may not be the most intuitive one by default uh, on many machines um, vim is configured as the standard text editor or the default text editor and that may be confusing to people so if you find that uh, git at some point has um, dropped you into vim then i'm going to demonstrate how to get out of vim so i uh, Ask for Vim, and this is the Vim text editor. It's not very intu intuitive, but the way you get out of this text editor or exit this text editor is to press the escape key and then type colon Q A exclamation, and that will get rid of all the changes. You, none of your changes will be saved and um, you will be exiting the text editor and this is just a fallback for beginners uh, as in this is just a uh, way I'm explaining to beginners on how to exit Vim. For this class uh, I am uh, assuming that uh, we are all beginners here if, you're, if that's not the case please feel free to go ahead with Vim or any other text editor that you are comfortable with uh, and there are configuration instructions available in the um, lesson on how to configure any text editor so there's all these text editors available that you can configure and there may be others um, that can be configured um, with, to work with git um, and you may refer to the lesson notes for this course i'm going to assume that we are all beginners and a good beginners text editor um, a terminal based text editor that um, works is nano First of all, we need to confirm whether Nano is installed on your computer and like you learned in the shell lesson, you can use the which command to know where Nano is available. So if Nano is available, the which command will detect where na if Nano is available and if it's available, it will echo the path where Nano is available. So it looks like we have Nano on our machine. You need to confirm whether Nano is indeed available on your machine. It's a, it's a nice and small text editor. It can be regarded as a business Editor. that's what I'm going to be using for this class so I need to configure git to work with nano and like all other commands I'm going to use git config 
and I'm going to configure it for all my projects core dot editor that's how you configure the text editor and you use nano dash with the dash w option and surrounded by quotes okay right and that's what we get so we have now configured all the settings that the bare bones setting that we have done so i'm going to now clear my computer screen so or clear my terminal window by using the clear command or you can also press ctrl l combination now to list all the configurations that we may uh, we have done so far you can use git config dash dash list now there may be a lot of things which we have not explicitly configured but there will be some same defaults hopefully and the git config list is going to tell you all the things that git understands in its basic configuration it will also list all the things that we have explicitly configured and uh, because my font size is pretty big here it may overflow one page um, and I'm going to use uh, the less pager, uh, pipe it to the less pager to show the configurations page by page. Oh, it looks like we have only one page. So what we have set up is explicitly core dot auto carriage return line feed is true. Uh, it will also give you, it will also echo back your email uh, and your username. Okay. And core dot auto CRLF is true, is set to true. Um, and the editor has been set to nano. So these are the things we have, we have explicitly configured and there are also some default configurations um, that Git uses in its default setting. Now I want to leave you with one last thought here and that is how to get help. For example, if you want to get help about any particular command, the help uh, command is type in the name of the command. You have to know at least this minimum. So git followed by the command, so git config, all the git commands start with git followed by the action that you want, right? So here in this particular video, we have covered git configuration and that is a git config command, followed by the dash h command. Now if dash h doesn't work, you can also use dash dash help. So git config dash h will return all the options that are available for you to configure. You can read this in much detail if you are interested, but this is the minimum bare bones configuration that we need. I'm going to clear my screen now and do git config dash dash help. This will be the same setting. So git config dash h or git config dash dash help. Oh, in this particular case, git config dash dash help did not work, but for on a Mac or on a Linux machine, git config dash dash help will work. So git config dash h will help and now if you want to screen that, see that one screen at a time so you can pipe it to the less command and use the f command to go forward and b command to go backward um, so forwards one screen f backwards one screen b and q for quitting and that's it and that's the end of the first lesson now we are configured git and we are now ready to go with tracking our uh, project's version history so see you in the next video